Hello and welcome back to yet another Mech Tech Tech. Today we have our third pre-con upgrade guide from Bloomboro, featuring Peace Offering Helmed by Ms. Bumbleflower. Uh, so this rabbit citizen is going to kind of be a little group huggy, which isn't my normal style of play, but it's kind of interesting, right? Uh, so this is a Bant Commander for one in Bant. Comes out as a 1-5 with Vigilance. Whenever you cast a spell, you're forced to gift a card to an opponent. All right, kind of don't like it, but you do get to put a plus one, plus one counter onto one of your creatures, and that creature gains flying for the turn. If this is the second time the ability resolved, you get to draw two cards yourself. So you do get to get a lot of card draw out of it yourself. You're kind of always looking to play exactly two spells a turn. You could go beyond that if you really wanted to, but two feels like that real sweet spot for it. Now, as always, we are going to remove 10 cards if we don't feel quite fit the strategy or just like could have better replacements. And, uh, well, replace them, right? We're going to put in 10 cards that are going to up synergy, up power. And after that's all done, we'll go over some honorable mentions that are either just like a little too expensive to recommend everyone run out and buy a copy of, or just weren't quite my top 10. Let's get started. Let's get started with those cuts. Covenant Jewel is up first, and it's a mana rock that I'm a little iffy on. So, Covenant Jewel costs 6 mana, so already very expensive for a mana rock. When it enters, you do get to draw three cards, and it does tap for three mana of one color. So, there's definitely value to be found here, but should an opponent hit you, they get to steal the Covenant Jewel, untap it if it's tapped, and draw three cards themselves. So I feel like it really kind of puts a target on your back. And, you know, I just, I'm not a big fan of it here. Uh, I think there are situations that call for Covenant Jewel, but this just isn't one of them. Following up that Jewel, we're cutting Generous Gift. Uh, I know some people like Generous Gift. Um, you know, it's very akin to Beast Within, only instead of a, you know, 3-3 three, three Green Beast, you're getting a 3-3 three, three White Elephant. Uh, I stand by the fact that single target removal in Commander is not the best feeling in the world. Obviously, you need to run a little bit of it, because there are certain cards that are like, no, this very specific thing needs to go, you know, do I really want to spend a board wipe to get rid of it? Not really. Um, but we're going to cut Generous Gift. Marshall Imperatus follows up that gift. It is a three-cost mono-white aura. It goads a creature that's attached to, so you could technically do it to your own stuff and, like, force your own attacks. It honestly feels like the best way to play it. Um, but it also passes out plus one, plus one to each other creature that is attacking one of your opponents. Uh, so I think goads fine. Again, it's growing on me. Um, but we have better ways of controlling the board state than this. This next one's probably a little controversial, and it's the Mana Gorger Hydra. They come in as a 1-1 one, one for 3. Anytime anyone casts a spell, they are going to get bigger. Uh, and it, it kind of falls into the strategy that we're doing here, right, which is plus 1, plus 1 counters. We're slinging at least 2 spells a turn, ideally. Um, and the Trample is nice, but I think that our ultimate win here is, honestly, through Commander Damage, with Miss Bumbleflower... We do have a couple alternate win cons in the deck already, and we've even added some more, which we'll get to in a moment. But I don't think that we need the Mana Gorger Hydra. Sun Scorch Regent is going to follow up that Hydra. They are a 5 cost mono white creature. They're a 4 3 with flying. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, so a little more limited than the Mana Gorger Hydra, it's going to get a plus one plus one counter, and we're going to gain some life. Uh, so again, it kind of technically falls into the plus one plus one counter strat that Miss Bumbleflower has. Uh, but I think we have better plus one plus one synergies that we could add to the deck that's more beneficial than just this one creature gets a buff. Rome Cloaked Giant. Uh, so this is a seven cost creature. Uh, they do have an adventure for five, which is a board wipe for all non giants. Uh, again, I just. It feels weird to have. We're not in a giant deck, right? Okay, like maybe there's a point where we want to just wipe the board. Eh. 
Um, they are a 7-7 seven, seven with Vigilance that we could cast after we've done the adventure, or before if we wanted to skip the adventure altogether. But I feel like, honestly, both effects are kind of weak for what we're doing here, so we're happy to let them go. Steel Burr Champion. So this is a 3-cost 1-1. One, one. It has Offspring for 1 and a white. Whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell specifically, it gets a little bigger. And again, I feel like this is fine, right? It's not a bad card by any means, but it's also only powering up itself. You know, it's vigilant, but it's not, it doesn't have trample, it doesn't have any kind of real evasion. Uh, so I'm, I'm fine with letting it go. Much like Jolly Gerbils. Uh, so Jolly Gerbils is a 2-3... Hamster Citizen for two. So stats actually aren't very bad for what it does, uh, or what it costs, rather. Whenever you gift anything, you get to draw a card. If Miss Bumbleflower specifically said that you got, you were gifting the cards, I think it would make more sense in the deck. I don't think we're actually gifting all that much. Uh, so for that reason, I'm happy to go ahead and cut it. Following up those gerbils, we have Mindstone. Mindstone is always one of those mana rocks where I'm like, listen, if you really want to like focus on mana rocks, that's cool. It's fine. It's even better if you're creating token copies of it to get that kind of sack out let going to draw those cards. But overall, I'm never very impressed with Mindstone, so I'm pretty happy to cut it. And the last of our 10 cards to cut is Hoofprint of the Stag. So this is a Kindred Enchantment Elemental. It's for one and a white. Whenever you draw a card, you put a Hoofprint counter on it. You can pay three, including one white, to remove four counters from it and create a 4-4 white elemental token only during your turn. And again, I think we, we are drawing enough that, you know, every other turn we're going to generate or have the access to generate a 4-4, which isn't bad. I think that in a token matters deck, this would serve a better purpose. Or a deck where like the main focus is you drawing cards. And don't get me wrong, we have plenty of card draw in this deck. You can make the argument that it is a card draw focused deck. But I, I definitely would make the argument that it's more plus one plus one strategy. So but with those 10 cards out of the way, we do need to add in 10 cards. So what are we adding? Well, first and foremost, we're adding the Fathom Mage. So Fathom Mage is a four cost one one. So it's like, wow, that's kind of expensive. Are you sure? I am pretty sure. They have Evolve. Uh, so they're gonna trigger that pretty early on. And more importantly, they have whatever a one one counter is put onto them. You get to draw a card. Um, so, I really like that secondary effect. That's really why we're playing them. And I think we're gonna get a lot of card draw off of it. Garuk's Uprising. Uh, so, Ms. Bumbleflower should get pretty big pretty quick to let us draw cards. And they're gonna pass out Trample to every one of our creatures. We also have a couple other big creatures in the deck that are gonna let us draw cards after the fact. Uh, but we're really here for that Trample. Dreamtide Whale. Uh, Dreamtide Whale is Chef's Kiss. Three mana for a 7-5 with Vanishing 2. Whenever a player casts their second spell each turn, Proliferate. So, we're always going to cast a second spell. This will definitely be our first spell for the turn that we want to go play it. That way, whenever we go to cast our second spell to get ourselves, you know, two-card draw, we're going to take it up, give it another time counter. It's going to stick around longer. And it's going to let us proliferate all of our plus one, plus one counters across all of our creatures. Approach of the Second Sun. Like I said, we're drawing a lot of cards in this deck. Uh, so I feel like we're actually going to be able to kind of dig through these seven cards that it like it's buried beneath and play it pretty quickly. Ideally, like the next turn, if we have a ton of card draw, maybe the same turn. Kami of Whispered Hopes. So Coming of Whispered Hopes is 100% a plus one, plus one counter enhancer. Passing out an extra plus one, plus one counter, they are also a mana dork. So if we happen to be passing out some counters to it, even just like, you know, one or two, just to get like the extra little bit, 
it's going to produce a ton of mana and as we have some proliferation effects it'll go even faster on the trail so on the trail says whenever we draw our second card each turn we get to go ahead and play an additional land granted that land does come into play tapped but i'm pretty okay with that the fact that this triggers on each turn is also super powerful so if we actually have you know we draw into two instants and we play them both on an opponent's turn triggering miss bubble fly were to have us draw two cards bam we get to play out another land I think that On the Trail is a super good add for this deck. Smuggler's Share. So Smuggler's Share is nice and budget. It's, it's around like the $150 to $2 range. It is a 3 cost mono white enchantment. At the beginning of each end step, we're going to draw a card for each opponent who drew two or more cards this turn. So if we target the same player with Miss Bumbleflower for both of her triggers, that's another extra card for us. We could also create a treasure if any of our opponents played at least two lands we don't have as much control over that but that's okay we're really here for that first part of the effect you know her you love her it's not set part of our veils i think everyone's adding this to this deck it makes a ton of sense you know each opponent cannot draw more than one card each turn so now you could target the same opponent you know for basically every spell you play yeah, they're going to get one card draw out of it, but that's fine. I think it works uh, pretty hilariously with Secret Rendezvous as well. Where you and target opponent would draw three cards. It's like, nah, you could have one. I'm going to have three. And you could target that same player with a Miss Bumbleflower trigger. So instead of getting four cards, right, they're just getting one. It's a good time. Innkeeper's Talent is a new card from Bloomborough. It's a new class. Um, so at the beginning of your combat, you're going to put a plus one, plus one counter on a creature you control. Already super good. And you can play this at two mana, so it's very strong. For a single green, you get to tick it up. It gives all of your creatures that have counters on them of any kind ward one. So it makes them a little harder to interact with, but not impossible. And you can power it up once again to level three. And you get to put twice as many counters on things whenever you go to put counters on them. Really letting you skyrocket how quickly Miss Bumbleflower is getting large and in charge. One last card from the additions, and then we'll get into the honorable mentions, and that is Branching Evolution. So Branching Evolution is another plus one plus one counter doubler for us. Uh, it's super strong, it's super budget, so three mana is going to get it out which does it pretty much on curve for us. Right, you start with Innkeeper's Talent, into Branching Evolution, into Ms. Bumbleflower, and you really have a recipe for success. Moving into those honorable mentions, we of course have things like Consecrated Sphinx. They are a $23 card, so I'm not telling everyone to run and go get one, but they work really well in this deck, right? It's like, cool, I'm gonna let you draw a card. When you do, I'm gonna draw two cards. Fairy Mastermind, whenever an opponent draws their second card each turn, you also get to draw a card. So again, super strong here. Phineas Ace Archer is a Bloomborough card. It's a 2-2 two, two for 2. It has Vigilance and Reach. Whenever it attacks, you get to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each other creature you control that is a token or a rabbit. Uh, so we care less about the token aspect, more about the rabbit aspect. Uh, it really only helps Miss Bumbleflower, I think, in the deck. Maybe, like, one or two others. Um, which is why it really didn't make it, because it's very budget, but it's just not top ten. Kroos, Defense Contractor. So this is from a new Capenna deck. Uh, same cost as Miss Bumbleflower. Beginning of your upkeep, you put a shield counter on target creature and opponent controls. Whenever you put one or more counters on a creature you don't control, you tap it down, you goad it, and it gains Trample until your next turn. I think this would actually be a pretty solid add. Much better than some of the cards that we removed earlier. In terms of like... Goading things, giving them Trample, kind of like... Really having control over the board and being able to move that control around as opposed to being on a fixed creature. Master of Ceremonies, more new Capenna stuff. So this is a 4 cost Rhino Druid. Beginning of upkeep, each opponent chooses money, friends, or secrets. 
For each money chosen, you get a treasure. For each friends chosen, you get a token. And for each secrets chosen, you get to draw a card. Uh, any of those modes are good, right? It's a little bit of group hug back in your favor. Um, not as synergistic as I would like, which is why it didn't quite make the cut. Noble Hierarch, right? This is the opposite of the ignoble Hierarch. Uh, but it has Exalted, which is kind of whatever. It's a nice little splash on top of it. But it taps for all three of our colors, or at least like one of them whenever you tap it. Uh, it is $10, so it's not super budget, but it's a good ad. Polywog Prodigy. So whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell with mana value less than the Polywog Prodigy's power, you get to draw a card, and it has Evolve. Uh, this is in the Offspring deck, I want to say. Uh, so it's sitting around 13 bucks. It's not super budget, so again, I wouldn't recommend everyone go out and grab one. But I feel like the extra card draw, which is, you know, again, I would say a sub-theme of this deck, is pretty solid. The Council of Four. Whenever a player draws their second card during their turn, you draw a card. Uh, so again, this works really well uh, just with Ms. Bumbleflower, right? Because this is a player and not an, an opponent. Uh, and whenever a player casts their second spell during their turn, you get to create a 2-2 White Knight creature token. Again, we're casting two spells a turn. I feel like the Council of Four is actually pretty synergistic here. Damning Verdict. So Damning Verdict is a sorcery to destroy all creatures with no counters on them. Just a solid board wipe for us. Uh, it is sitting at $10, so not budget enough to recommend people run out and grab one. Seagate Restoration, also known as Seagate Reborn, is a phenomenal land, which lets us draw cards equal to the number of cards in our hand plus one, and makes it so for the rest of the game, we just don't have a hand limit. We're also looking at a classic in the form of Hardened Scales for a little bit more plus one plus one synergy. Omniscience and one with the multiverse for basically free spells. Rhystic Study and Smothering Tithe to really reward us for letting other people draw cards and also for them casting spells. The Fairies Angels Insight if we really want to ramp up how quickly we're drawing. Trouble in Pairs because hey, no one else should be able to have extra turns. Those aren't cool. And if an opponent attacks us with at least two creatures or casts their second spell, we're going to draw cards. And the obvious addition that we didn't include in the main deck or in our upgrades is the original, the OG, the Ozolith. Um, you know, we're going to lose plus one plus one counters as creatures die, as the board gets wiped, things of that nature. You really want to be able to save those off to the side, replay them onto creatures, and especially with some doubling effects in play, it really gets out of hand. But guys, that is the upgrade guide for Peace Offering. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Did you agree with my ads, my removes, the honorable mentions? You know, were there cards that I missed that you're like, I can't believe, I can't believe you didn't think of this card. What, are you an idiot? The answer is maybe. But, uh, if you enjoyed this video, if you felt like you got some value out of it, go ahead and give me a like, leave a comment down below, subscribe to the channel, maybe even ring the bell to get yourself notifications for whenever I post videos. But until next time, I'm Mechanized Minion, aka the Energy King. Good luck with your builds.